Classical Rams. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside Big Game Miles Jackson, B Mad Brian Madden. Guys, 48 to 40, the score of last week's game up at the Manning Bowl in Lynn. The boxers came up about six inches shy on the final play of the game. And the boxers have a lot to work on. Their defense was phenomenal week one against Duxbury, but poorest week two up at the Manning Bowl. Yeah, a little disappointing with um I was a little disappointed in Brockton's defense going up there to Lynn. But um, the offense looked great and um so that that's an uptick. That the offense looks great. I'm sure Coach Colombo worked on the defense during practice this week. Yeah, I think the excuse me, I think the key to today is execution, execution um, for the Brockton's um, offense. I'm not sure how Natick's uh, team is faring this year. I haven't read too much about them, but I'm sure they're going to give the boxers some fits at times. Well, last year's matchup between these two teams, mile, Miles, up at Natick High, ended in a blocked extra point walk-off 98-yard return for the Brockton boxers. Quite the crazy ending. Natick's looking for revenge here for that very upsetting loss early last season. Yeah, that, that will motivate Natick coming here to uh, enemy territory and trying to um, take one away from Brockton on their home turf. Well, a little bobble off of the opening kickoff and brought down at the 15-yard line is Natick's number two, Nick Ophidile. Natick wearing their visiting all-white jerseys with... Uh, royal blue trim around the red numbers Brockton in their home black jerseys with maroon trim around the white they numbers from yeah from way up here Nate it looks like the uh, Nebraska Cornhuskers yes, yeah and the N on their helmet the Natick starts off with two wideouts to the far side, none on the near sideline. Number 12 screen pass complete. That is quarterback Will Lederman complete to Nick Palmer. Well, Natick's got a mismatch on the near sideline. There's two wide receivers and only one cornerback for the boxers calling for help and wide open but a few yards ahead of it was Palmer yeah the D um, the defense got a break right there because the other cornerback was trying to call somebody over but um, they responded but they responded at the snap and if that pass was anywhere near that receiver Brock boxers could have been in trouble for a big gain A little bit of a lineup mismatch again with two wideouts to the near side. Now Brockton's strong safety lining them up correctly. Lederman going deep and it's about five yards out of reach of Nick Palmer who has been the only receiver targeted so far. He's got one catch on three attempts. hitting every receiver right in the numbers. But it's easy to hit a receiver when there's no defender on you. And uh, you don't have a, a defender rushing you. So. Yeah, it's key right there, Brian. Somebody rushing you is a lot different than um, throwing passes during practice. Yes. Now a knuckleball punt falling at the 47 and dying at the 46 in a horizontal line. And a late flag thrown in as that ball was rolling away. It's going to be holding. <laughs> against Brockton. So they'll be knocked back a few yards to start this. First, I'll tell you, Natick's um, first two games, they scored 31-7 on um, Walpole and 
42 to nothing on Needham. So, um, you know, they, they can put up some numbers. Yeah, they, Natick's got some offensive power there just to, by those two scores that you just um, told us with. Well, we've got the first look at Devontae Medley. Last week, 16 completed passes out of 30 attempts, good for 250 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, Medley had a great game last week, um, relatively. You know, he, he, he was um, consistent and he was able to protect the ball. Medley in the gun, trips to the far side. Isaiah Laguerre, Trey Shula Hall on the far side. Amik Watterson and Navon Reed to the near sideline. Watterson with two touchdowns last game as well as a converted two-point conversion. This one is complete to number nine who was brought down across the 50 to the 47 yard line. That was an interesting pass because there were two receivers over there with one defender. And yes and um, the quarterback threaded the needle because the defensive uh, back almost was able to come up with something. Medley in the gun, splitting out and off the fingertips of a jumping Isaiah Laguerre. That first down completion was to Adam Mola wearing number nine tonight. No, he's good on number eight. He is on number eight. The last catch? Yeah. It was number eight. Yep. He See him going there. out there? Eyes oh, on the far side, wearing number eight. You got there was a lot. There was a, dog. I forgot him at home. <laughs> there was a lot of confusion on the right side of me on the PA section of this box. And <laughs> now Medley whoa, whoa, going whoa. spiral towards the near sideline intended for Navon Reed and caught by a Brockton police officer. And I'll, I'll tell you, we, we've seen um, a trend real quick. It's only the first drive on, the, on both teams, but they're, um, they're going to the air very quickly. You know, uh, uh, Brockton is so versatile with the run, the option, and the pass, but they're going pass first now. And going back to last week, the first designed halfback run up the middle for Meek Watterson on the second drive of last week's game up in Lynn, as Medley's in trouble, he's going to get spun down and sacked back at the Brockton 45 yard line. The ball was fumbled on the snap. Amik Watterson picked it up, found a hole, Brian, and went right up the middle 65 yards yes, for a touchdown. Yeah, that was fantastic, that was a great run. And, you know, unfortunately when we do the away games, we don't have the benefit of the instant replay. So, you know, you really have to pay attention for it live because, you know, the instant replay gives we get spoiled here. We have a fantastic audio visual team. A high end over end kick falling at the 30 yard line into the arms, arms of number six, Aiden Holly, called for the fair catch. Well, I, I did have the pleasure of editing last week's game, so I got to watch some of the plays back. Some of the memorable ones was the tackle on the far sideline, the kind of Spider-Man grab by number 25, a Johnny Horn. And then, if you remember, Brian, back in the fourth quarter, with time winding down, it was fourth and one, yes. with the boxers on the doorstep. Yes. And Isaiah Laguerre just face-planted. Yes, he did. And that was a false start penalty, the boxers were trying the hard count, trying to draw the Rams off sides and instead got called for the false start. And I'll tell you, that was a great block there by um, number seven linebacker Terrence Cherry, who knocked over our linebacker, Sean O'Brien. Well, he's a wide receiver on, on offense, but it was a nice block, opening up uh, a little bit more room for his yes. for his running back. And and the nice recovery by the uh, linebacker, Winodi, number five. Nice pursuit. They got about three yards on the carry. This one off the hand of Nick Palmer. Hey, Lederman is struggling in the passing attack early. Yeah, right now, early on, he's not too sharp at the moment, but. 
All it usually takes a one or two completions. And it might be off to the races for Natick if Broxton's defense, defense isn't careful. Four receiver set, two split to each side for Will Lederman. Back to pass, looking long over the middle. He's got his man number two, and it's caught. All the way down to the 23-yard line, Nick Ophidile. Yeah, the key to that play was offensive line for Natick. You'll see it on the replay. Gave the quarterback a lot of time. Line just couldn't get in. He stayed right in the pocket. That was a nice throw. And he threw it, he threw it where only his receiver could catch it. Now one lone wideout. It's Ophidile to the near sideline. The give is to number four, who is cut down immediately. That's Jalen Aponte. And he, he tripped over his own player, number 44. Who's that? Uh, Christian Lederman. I would think that that is um, the quarterback's brother. Now Lederman pitches out to Aponte. Flag thrown in. Aponte brought down at the 16-yard line. It's going to be holding against the Natick Redhawks. Yeah, Brock, Brock can get the break there. And here's a sign of the weather forecast for tonight. It is, let's pull it up here, 80 degrees in Brockton on one of the last days of summer. A slight breeze coming in from the east. Lederman back to pass, screen pass complete to Ophenile who's got room on the far side now cutting back inside. He is brought down at the 17 yard line. Got a nice little screen pass over there. He had the blockers and setting up for him. You'll see it right there. Not only did we have a group of shirtless boxer fans coming in, presumably with the word boxer written on their chests, they're also wearing animal masks. God, the millennials are weird. Lederman in the gun. Looking over the middle, in trouble now. He's going to keep it himself. And all the way down to the nine yard line, number 15 was in on the tackle, Rodrigo Lima. Yeah, nice effort there. You'll see it on replay. He had no one to go to, then gets out of the pocket. And a nice run to effort to get that first down. And great job by the offensive line to, um, you know, as that pocket collapsed, give him enough time to find a, a seam and just turn it upfield. He give to Aponte, bobbing and weaving. He's going to be cut down near the five-yard line. Nice stop by Rodrigo Lima. Here's the replay. You see him. Bounce outside, cut it up, and Lima wrapped him around the ankles and brought him down. So the Red Hawks are threatening. To give now to the big fullback, number seven, who is across the line for a touchdown. Terrence Cherry, the senior running back. We have an injured boxer. A player down on the field. And Cherry looks like a very big boy for the Natick Redhawks. Six. Josiah, sorry. Maybe we can see what we'll happened see on the replay. See what happened. Watch number six. It just looks like he was pushed from back from behind and just fell over. Nice to see him running off the field. Keep an eye on him for you. It is the extra point attempt coming from number 51, Sim Waltzman. 
listed as an offensive lineman. The kick is up, and the kick is good. That was an impressive kick. That really got yeah. some height under it. 7-0, the Natick Redhawks leading the Brockton Boxers early in the first quarter. The third game of this young season for the Boxers coming in at 1-1. One and one. A ton of scoring helped along by the... Well, I, I spoke to the uh, head coach, uh, was it? Mark Martorelli. Um, about their start, you know, 42 nothing and 30 something to seven and uh, 31 seven. And I said, you know, good start, you know, strong, strong team. He said, yeah, well, those two teams, um, you know, aren't, aren't the strongest. So the numbers could be a little bit skewed. They're looking for a tougher game today against Brockton. Well, we appreciate the honesty by the native coach. This is their first big test of the uh, early in the season. A rare touchback in high school football. Yeah, and all the coaches, um, all the teams throughout the, the uh, region are dealing with the rule changes, and it's an adjustment for everybody. You know, there are some things that coaches like, there are some things that they don't like and just trying to get acclimated to the rule changes as well as the officiating being consistent with the rule changes. That's gonna be the biggest thing, you know? What's gonna be a, a, a judgment call by a, a, an umpire? Amik Watterson putting together a nice run and getting an extra few after throwing his hand in the face of Aiden Holly. Watterson, five touchdowns on the year. Four of them through the air. Now the end around give to Isaiah Laguerre trying to find a hole and get towards midfield. He is able to cross the 50 yard line to the 49. Yeah, that was a nice hole opening by yeah. the offensive line. You'll see it there. He goes to the outside, cuts back in nicely. Hurry up offense. Outstanding blocking. Watterson gets the motion give now. And a very slow developing play there and that did not fool Natick. But he still got some positive yards out of it because um, he just really tiptoed along the line yeah, he and waited, waited, and, for, an and waited for, for um, his blockers to open up and give him some sort of crease. Five receiver set, Watterson in motion again. It's gonna be a quarterback keeper up the middle for Medley. He gets down to the 39 yard line. Yeah, that was a nice play there because it faked me out. I'm looking at Watterson. And you see that the option play with uh, Medley keeping control of the ball. It's something very interesting that um, you won't find too often with uh, uh, high school players. But I'll wait till after the play. Watterson in motion, Medley back to pass. Going rainbow towards Navon Reed, who's got it, and backpedaling towards the end zone. He's brought down at the three. What an adjustment while the ball was in the air by Navon Reed. Yeah, that was an and you see adjustment. here, the ball's in the air even before he turned around. He turned around, adjusted his, his, his feet. And caught and, uh, it over his head. And went up and, and brought it down. Yeah, he used his height advantage there and, and his size and basically went after the football. And that's a good sign. Navon going after the football because he has the height and he has the, the size to uh, sometimes just bull over those um, defensive backs out there. Yes, because you're going to find that a lot of times the defensive backs, um, because of athleticism, are shorter in stature. You know, you're not finding a whole lot of defensive backs that are six foot and above. He gives to number 30 who walks into the end zone. Diamond Blakely, the 5'8 junior. You might recognize that name from basketball season. And the boxers are on the board able to answer that good drive by the Natick Red Hawks with 4.15 to go in the first quarter. The extra point attempt coming. Number 27.
The kick is up. No and good. No it good. Is wide to the right. It had the distance. That was a nice drive by the boxes to, um, you know, that long pass play was instrumental, but Waterman, Watterson started out with the nice run back, bringing him out to um, close to the 40 yard line. So it was about what, four or five plays? Running plays. They were setting um, Natick up, do, do four or five running plays, and then they throw it to the wide receiver deep. Again, the coverage was pretty good. Yes, it By was. By Natick, it was just, uh, Navon went up and he wanted it more than they did. He made a great adjustment, like Mad Dog said, in a catch. Yeah, and I, I think the height differential is gonna be a huge factor. Um, if um, if the boxers continue to use that weapon, that weaponry, what is that, flag on the play? Oh, oh they need to. They, that would help. That run was actually by Markendi Souffrant, who switched numbers on us without telling anybody. What happened? A couple, and Diamond Blakely is wearing number 34, so those two switched numbers. And what a special team was stop. Like ball? No, somehow he came up with that. Well, you'll see it on the replay. Somehow, yeah, look, yeah, he was look. able to get that foul. I thought it possibly could have been Brock, yeah, but we had two defenders there. See, and he, he just happened to get the nice little bounce, and he was able to hang on to it. So they backed up deep, 15-yard line. Some number changes for the boxers. Number 19, Isaiah Jackson and Gershon Souffrant, number 20, have switched numbers. So Souffrant's 19, Jackson's 20. Diamond Blakely and Markendi Souffrant switching numbers. Blakely now 34. Souffrant is now number 30. And the boxers come away with the fumble. It was a Johnny Horn. Nice job by that defense. Let's see what happened. Oh. He just the never exchange, got his handles yeah. on it. The exchange wasn't crisp. And the boxers took advantage. So now the boxers have an opportunity to take their first lead over this young game. Excellent starting field position at the 22 yard line of the Natick Red Hawks. Adam Filet, the lone wide out to the far side. Trey Shula Hall and Navon Reed to the near side. They give to Amik Watterson. He spun around, stay able to bounce off four Red Hawks and get to the first down marker. That was just a great effort by Watterson. Yeah, tenacious run by um, Watterson. He, he was wrapped here. up. Right, right he's there, he's right got there the- By number 40. At the 15. Three more. And the last player to get to him was number six. That's eight yards after that first contact. Now he splits out to the far side. Medley in a clean backfield. Back to pass. He's gonna keep it himself. He's got a clear path to the first down and more. It's a touchdown, boxers. Devontae Medley with a 14 yard touchdown run. Yeah, Medley used his speed right there because you saw the two defenders coming at him at about the one, but he's so fast, he just cut right through him. You'll see it here. Right about there. That's an excellent block by Adam Olafalea on the yeah. far side. Great team offense. Downfield blocking. Yeah, fantastic, it was a great job. Legal substitution against the boxers. Backed him up, illegal substitution. So 
Now it'll be a 25-yard extra point. Ball snap. The kick is up. And, and the that kick was is good. good. That was good. Nice kick. That was a good kick. So that has to give the boxes some momentum, Brian. Yes. And you know what? They, the, the defense did a great job. They only had a couple of plays that they had to deal with. But they were able to cause that turnover and then turn it into some, um, some points. Well, the boxer's kicker not listed on the roster. It is a Milton Lors Batista, number 27, for the boxers. Oh, that's the... Um, Field goal kicker, extra point kicker. And that was, Brian, one of the issues we saw last week in Lynn. The boxers had a lot of trouble converting the extra point attempts. Yes, they did. Excellent kick now, backfield at the four yard line. And in trouble is number two, Odafile, who's cut down very nicely by Achi Winodi. Yeah, that was a nice tackle by Achi. This kicker's starting to impress me. Huh? This kicker's starting to impress me early. Yes. Now that's the same, the, the extra point kicker is the, the punter? Or is that still, um, what's the, uh, the other kid's name? I believe the punt was... Batista. I believe the oh, punt's still no, coming from McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, that's yeah. Now it's a mismatch on the near side. Brockton able to adjust, but it's a run. And good for a gain of about five yards. to go in the first quarter. It's 13 to 7. Brockton on top of the Natick Redhawks. Another run. This one good for a first down. That's a Ponte on the run for the Redhawks. Yeah, nice run by a Ponte. He put his head down once he got through that line to make sure he got that first down. The end of the first quarter, we're gonna drop some big football news. Timeout called by Brockton before that play. And let me tell you something, what a, what a difference a week makes, because um, last week, Natick's uh, leading rusher was actually uh, Montes, sophomore, and Cherry. Lederman, of course. Lederman's going to do, do some um, some breakaways. And Aponte, total yards, he had one one rush for uh, a one reception for eight yards, but he wasn't really rushing last year. I mean, last week. And Montas hasn't reception. touched the ball yet today. Huh? And Montas hasn't touched no. the ball yet today. He might have got injured. I don't know. I mean, because um, he was their leading rusher last week. He had uh, 11 carries for 76 yards. So averaging 6.9 yards per carry, which is really good. Well, you gave me the perfect segue, so I can't wait till the end of the first quarter. What a difference a week makes. The Patriots cut Antonio Brown. Yeah. Yes. A lot of drama there. Too much drama for uh, Bill, Pe Bill Belichick and Robert Kraft. It seemed like every 15 minutes for Brown, a new story was breaking about his off the field issues. Well, let me tell you something. Someone like that, and, and, and you know, I was talking to one of the administrators at my school today, and we are talking about this young man who's always been very respectful for me. I'm not going to mention his name. He's always been very respectful for me. And she's like, she said, well, you know, the kid just always finds trouble. He can't get out of his own way, you know? And, and um, that's what I'll say about Brown after this play. Lederman back to pass, looking long. It's wobbly over the middle, and what an adjustment by Nick Ophidial, who came back to catch that one. Yeah, that was a nice catch, because yeah, he, he went down low he, for that. He made, and you're gonna see it here, and he, the ball's in the air, and um, he cuts to the middle of the field and makes that catch. Fantastic catch by Ophidial. 
punches. And additionally, Another roughing the passer yeah. against the boxers. So that. Another 15 yards? Yeah, that'll put it at. But back to Brown real quick. If Brown would have just shut up a little bit more and just taken on more of the Patriot way and just, you know. It, let it seemed like he had started to the first couple of days he was on the team. Didn't speak to the media, no social media posts. It was kind of quiet. He, he wasn't speaking to the media, but he was talking to these women that are making these accusations. Leave them alone, let them yap, and say nothing. Like like Chung, Chung got that, that um, drug charge up in Canada. You haven't heard a peep out of him, not, not a, a single word. And where is he? On the team. So, all right, we need to focus on this team. Don't get me started. <laughs> Yeah, T. Uh, Brown too busy texting and yeah, you know you don't need to be doing that. Threatening and and you know doing this and saying that, stupid, stupid stuff, you know. And and like I said, if you were to just shut up and let those talk and say nothing and let everything work its way out, work itself out, he might still be on the team. So we'll, we'll flip the script at the end of the first quarter in one minute and nine seconds. Here's a run by Aponte. I'll give you a little teaser. Start thinking about it. Does Brown get picked up by another team or does the NFL say nobody's allowed to sign him until his off the field issues are sorted out? That, that's well, a I don't good know scenario. if the Players Association would allow the NFL to ostracize him as they did with um, Kaepernick, you know, so you know, if, if 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 they do to him what they did to Kaepernick, Kaepernick took them to court, won his case, and now he's even trying to get back, saying I'll take even a backup role. Lederman back to pass over the middle. Whoa, I was going to say that's the catch of the year. Yeah, if he makes it, that was a great yeah. effort. To see what it looks like. And he did had, a post had, pattern. Yeah, had he waited just a hair longer yeah. and got the gave the receiver a chance to catch up with the ball, it would have been a touchdown. That's going to Sports Center if he catches that for Nick Palmer. A timeout called by the Natick Red Hawks with 20 seconds to go in the first quarter, 13 7, Brockton up. Yeah, this is something they got to think about. Fourth down, and it's about um, seven. Seven yards, eight yards to go for a first down. So they want to talk it over. And uh -huh. um, be interesting to see what they do. Because uh, it seemed like they got a pretty strong kicker. Yeah, well, while there's a low in the action, let me just tell you a little bit more about um, Lederman. You know, last week he um, had eight catches out of 20 attempts. So he's not the most accurate quarterback um, and but when he when he makes the reception it could be a good one you know he's got a fantastic receiver in number two so they're going for it five wide on fourth and a long six we'll call it seven for the Red Hawks trips to the far side Lederman alone in the backfield he drops back to pass a quick pass is going to be caught across the 10 to the six yard line is number 19, David Saichi. Yeah, Natick's uh, offensive line doing a great job giving the quarterback time to throw the football. That was kind of a quick out, but still he's, the defensive line is having trouble getting in there, putting pressure on the quarterback. Fox at zero. We have reached the end of the first quarter. It is 13-7. Brockton over the Natick Red Hawks, but Natick threatening. It's first and goal to go for them on the six-yard line. Brockton had the slow start, but they put together a couple of nice drives and scored on consecutive drives. Yeah, it, great, great. Um, the last two drives of the box have been good. And now it's up to the defense to see if they can meet the challenge and uh, keep this uh, Red Hawk defense offense out of the end zone. Well, next week, and we'll preview this a little bit more in depth later, but we get to see a classic matchup, one that we used to only see in the Super Bowl, Brockton versus Everett. Yes. 
Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Get to travel those, up to Everett. Those are some one. great battles back in the day, huh? Yeah. We used to have a lot of fun going up to Everett, Everett coming here. It's a little bit different this year. Of course, Everett's longtime head coach, 300 game winner, left that position at Everett High School and went to Catholic Memorial to do the same thing. And of course, back in those days, Brockton was coached by the great Armand Colombo. Yes. Yeah, those playoff games up in up there were cold brutal and cold. brutal. You, me and, you, you me and Peter. Peter, yeah. Oh. It'd be 10 degrees outside. Peter be in shorts and a t-shirt. <laughs> Pete, what are you thinking? Lederman, quarterback keeper, trying to get to the outside. He does, and he'll walk into the end zone on touch. Touchdown, Red Hawks. Yeah, it was a nice job by the uh, line there to give him some blocking, and he went to the outside. That was a good run. Yeah, well executed play by uh, Natick. Tie game 13 to 13. Natick to attempt the extra point to give them a lead. Flag on the play. Flag on the play for the, it's gonna be against the boxers, so it'll be penalty declined. Some, the extra point is good. With some booming extra points. Yes. And they he's listed as an one. offensive lineman, number 51, Sam Waltzman. Yeah, Sam's got some sh strong legs. Offsides against Brockton. The way it looked, he could have went back another 20 yards and put that right through the uprights. It's high, so it's less chance of the Brockton defenders blocking the kick. So that's a nice addition to have as a good kicker. Oh, they're actually going to move it up on the offsides against Brockton. Natick accepted the penalty. Wow. And maybe now they're going to go for two. Two. I was going to say, maybe they're going for two. Really? Okay. Bold strategy. Well, you know what? I'm glad because um, it'll keep the score tied when Brock the boxes stop them. Because their kicker is too consistent. He's, he's on point, you yeah. know? Well, they're gonna kick an extra point again. Hmm. Was the not what did the last one miss? No, it was good. This one is wow up and good, and it would have been good from 30 yards out or more. That was a. <laughs> that almost that was like the old, uh, I believe it was 2013, the Patriots at the Ravens, where the extra point or the field goal attempt went over the upright, so it was good. That controversial game-ending play that the Ravens defeated the Patriots in the AFC Championship game. This one's clearing the top of the uprights. Yes. So, Natick back to a 14 to 13 lead. Well, if you guys uh, pay attention to different sports feeds on Facebook, CBS Sports featured a Massachusetts matchup last week. Marshfield was going against one of the regional schools down there. Uh, it might have been Duxbury. And Marshfield was down 35 to nothing in the middle of the third quarter, and they came back to win it. Wow. 
And breaking loose is a Johnny Horn to the 40 to the 45. And taking the hit at the 50 yard line. What a return by a Johnny Horn. Yeah, let's see that return. Can you, can you see the replay? He just Once he breaks through that hole, he's gone. And nice stop by, um, who's that, number 20? 51. 51. That's and the kicker, Sam Waltzman. Yeah. And lucky One for them, he had an angle and he hustled over there. Medley gives to Watterson. Watterson charging ahead for a gain of about seven. And you know how they, they have the option play, all right? Um, I had touched upon it earlier. And um, Medley has the ability to call whether or not he's, or hand the ball off or keep it. You know, usually uh, the, the quarterback, the, the, no, the, um, they'd call it in and say, okay, hand it off, whatever. But they're like giving him that, that option. So that's why we see him so many times hold on to the ball because he's debating whether or not he wants to keep it and run himself. And but he's got to make that he's decision make that quicker. Decision quicker. The give to Isaiah Laguerre, getting a nice stiff arm on number five of the Red Hawks. And He's ultimately brought down for a loss of a yard. It'll be second and 11. Yeah, that just shows you, Brian, how the coaches have a lot of confidence in Watterson to uh, make that decision why he's out there in the field. Yes, yes, yes. Medley um, um, definitely has been doing a great job. Better. He did better last week, and he's doing a great job today. You know, that first couple of games, uh, first game of the season, it was a struggle. Four wide, Watterson to Medley's right. Medley back to pass. Watterson was a blocker. And now it's complete to Isaiah Laguerre who has stopped at the 33 yard line. And Le Laguerre just decided not to go down. He's like, I'm not going down. Nice Gibbs option there. Watterson. Watterson charging ahead and he is phenomenal after contact. Yeah, his yards after um after receiving or, or afterwards running after the play after he gets, gets the ball was fantastic. So Miles has been silent for a minute or two because I just showed him the play from last week on fourth and one where Isaiah Laguerre just face planted for the false start. And Miles, your, your face looked like a mix of disgusted and disappointed, all in the same yeah, token. Yeah, I, I just say more disappointed. I feel sorry for that Brockton player there on the outside. He was just anticipating he was ready and he just fell over because yeah. his, his momentum, he was waiting for that count and it never came before uh, he moved. Tough way to lose. Medley pitches out to Watterson. Another three or four yards after contact. Yeah, Watterson doing an excellent job picking his spots, waiting, having patience to wait for his uh, blockers to make the block. Medley in the shotgun. Five wide, three to the near side. Trey Shula Hall, Adamoto Filet, and Navon Reed in the slot. Change of play from the coaching staff. And a timeout called by Brockton. They didn't like what they saw. Natick had seven players inside the tackle box. 
Yeah, and, and the thing about that is third down and five, so they want to really get this first down, so they want to make sure everybody's on the same page. And like I said, they might not have liked Natick's um, defensive setup, so they called a timeout because they want to continue this drive down the field. Yeah, because Medley um, got the message from the, from the coaching staff, change something, and then, you know, just shut it down. Better to uh, burn a timeout than burn it down when it's third down and five, and you're threatening. You're in the red zone. Exactly. It's a big defensive stance right here for the Natick Red Hawks. Or offensive drive for uh, the Brockton Boxers. Brockton changing the formation now. Amik Watterson goes to the outside slot. Mitch match out, out here. Medley's going to keep it himself and get wrapped up immediately. It'll be a loss of two. Yeah, that, that did not fool the um, Natick defense. Seven fifteen to go in the second quarter. Watterson to Medley's right. Navon Reed the lone wide out to the far side trips to the near sideline. Now Medley back to pass. He's going to split to the inside. And he's just going to get run out of bounds. It will be a turnover on downs for the Brockton Boxers and a nice defensive stand there in the red zone for the Natick Red Hawks. Yeah, nice job of coverage downfield by the uh, Natick defensive backs. Watterson couldn't find anybody really open. So the only thing he could do is run it out of bounds. So good stands for the um, Red, Hawk, Red Hawks of Natick. First and 10 for the Red Hawks from the 25 yard line. Yeah, we still got 6.53 left in this second quarter. We don't want to hear it, Miles, because the sun is still out. It's not as slow moving as last week's game. Last week's game's runtime was two hours and 50 minutes. Wow. Longest game in high school history. <laughs> and Miles conveniently wasn't there. Yeah, I just couldn't get out there. It took us two hours to get, to get there to in get travel there. time. Just about. I spent two hours to get up there, three hour game, hour or so to get back home. You're talking six, seven no, hours. 45 minutes to get home. Oh, okay. 45 minutes to get home. Well, by the time the game finished and we got out of there, it was after 11 o'clock at night. Wow. First and 10 for the Red Hawks as the Brockton High Marching Band comes alive. Gets the crowd going a little bit. Isaiah Laguerre is the strong safety way back at the 40 yard line. He was. Nice collective tackling by um, Wadnati. Isaiah Laguerre put a hit on number 55, Luke Raider, and Raider is not putting much weight on his left leg as he hobbles to the sideline. Yeah. I mean, he was moving quick, limping off the field, but um, he's in some pain over there, holding his left ankle. Lederman in the gun, low snap, and it's gonna be a false start against the Red Hawks, who was number seven who committed the penalty, Terrence Cherry. So brings it to a second and about nine and a half to go.
Lederman on a play action where no running back was involved in even trying to fool the defense to see if they bit. Yeah, that was a nifty play right there. And Archie. You'll see it Go here on the replay. Yep. Nick Palmer. And then you see Archie coming up from behind. Tackles him on uh, the 40-yard line, 39. Nick moving it along, and now Aponte is brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Forward progress might have got him a gain of a yard. That was a nice tackle by Sean O'Brien. See it right there. Sean read that well. Lederman in the gun. Another slow developing play action pass. It's caught by Palmer. He's got a gain of six. Yeah, the boxes need to start paying attention to Palmer. That's his second time. He's kind of been open. But I'll, I'll tell you, when, when they're throwing to the um, visitor side of the field, uh, the receiver is looking directly into the sun. So. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So good job by um, Nick Palmer with the sun in his eyes. You can see the shadow of the uh, press box halfway across the field. <clears throat> First down run for Aponte. Gang tackle by the Brockton Boxers defense. Looks like that's the only way going to get him down. He's he's quite um, built there. He's not that tall, but he's he's stocky. Stocky, yes. Look at that. He's running Look at like him a legs, bull. legs driving. Lederman in the gun, Aponte behind him, three receivers. They give to Aponte. He's going to be stopped by about 80% of the defensive line for the boxers. And uh, Aponte was, was driving. I yes, mean, he was, carrying, legs. he was carrying about three um, defenders looked like, before um, the fourth came in and stopped it. Yeah, he looked like the bus. Yes. Hall of Famer Bettis. Bo Jackson, you know. Bo Jackson. Lederman, play action screen pass complete to Palmer. Cutting to the outside, he's brought down by Isaiah Laguerre, but he's got enough for a Natick first down. Yeah, that play's working, that play action. They look for Palmer, no, nobody's really covering him tight. <laughs> Nate's got a good drive going here, using up some of his clock, 313 left and counting here in the second quarter. Proctor's defense is confused. They weren't able to get set. And I'll tell you, they're staying on the ground, they're burning up that clock, driving down field, and even if the box is stopped him within the next 10, 10 yards or so. That's in the kicker's range. Yeah. And in the passes that they have thrown on this drive, they're completing them, so the clock is running. Yes. Two and a half to go in the first half. Natick trying to expand upon their one point lead. Carry by number seven, Terrence Cherry. One lone wide out, it's Nick Ophidile to the near side. Lederman splits out, he's under pressure by Forts. And stepping out of play, but another first down for the Red Hawks. That was Devin Forts yeah, on the far sideline. Lederman showing his speed. Just gets around, but he was just pushed out there by Devin Forts. Devin Forts 
father is the DJ at Marciano Stadium tonight. No, that's not his father. Not his father. That's his uncle. 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 Correction on that. Correction. Huh? I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stevie Ford's back there uh, spinning the yeah, ones spinning and twos. Spinning the hits. Yes. Yeah. Buck 20 to go in the second quarter. Trips to the near side as Nidic goes four wide. The Boxers could use a sack right now. Back them up a little bit. Lederman's gonna there keep it is. himself. There it is. Lederman oh. evading the tackle and he takes a shoulder pad right to the gut at the 11 yard line. Archie Winaldi was right there. He was right there, he just he couldn't right get a there. good just, handle on him. Yeah, he came in so fast, he was able to elude the tackle and um, You'll see it here on the replay. I, I tell you, Will Lindley. See, look, look how quick he's in there. Yeah. He's in there, was untouched. But he's a good, strong kid. So it's going to take a, you have to uh, get a good shot at him to get him down. Actually, that was not, that was Rodrigo Lima. That wasn't Archie. Collection give to Aponte. He's brought down at the six. It'll be second in. And Nadek's doing a five. great job. With clock management, just just continuing to get down there, close to the goal line with just under um, 25 seconds remaining in the half. Lederman back to pass, pump face, splits oh, to the outside. The flag? Yeah, that's like a clip. Throws it up and incomplete. And it was no call. And there's a boxer down. And he might have been the one clipped. Yeah, he was the one that was clipped. Let's You're going to see it right here. It's number 58. He's on the inside of the defensive line. Look at... Huh. That is Gio Brown, the 6'1", 215 senior. Let's see if we can see it again. Oh, we're back to live action. And let's see again. Let's see if we can see that where the player got hurt. Oh, he was tripped. Number 65 had his leg out and tripped him. Probably hurt his shin right there. There. That number 55 for the Red Hawks. That's Luke Rader. Offensive lineman. He's going to be careful with that leg because... Raider was the one that hobbled all the way across the field a little bit earlier in the half. Yeah, that, that's yeah. a tough break there. It should have been a tripping flag. And didn't he get hurt up in Lynn? Who got hurt up in Lynn? I believe that was Jose DePina, number 73. Oh, you know what? It was De Jose DePina, I believe. I think Gio Brown got hurt last week, too. Four wide for the Red Hawks. 14 seconds to go. It is third and five. Yeah, Brockton calls a deep, uh, defensive timeout. Well, Brian, if there's a time that the defense needs to stand tall and, and hold him here, that'll be a big play, especially, like you said, with all the time that the uh, Red Raiders, excuse me, the Red Hawks have uh, taken off this second period clock. And, and they, they, still have, um, they still have a timeout remaining, and their um, field goal kicker is, is outstanding. You know, we've, we've got a small percentage of, of, of experience with him today, but um, his extra point kicks would have easily made it from 30 yards or more. I'll tell you who could use a good kicker right now is the Patriots. Steven Gostowski missing a couple kicks last week. Maybe this kid is available. So what, what was sad is Adam Vinatieri, <laughs> longtime Patriots kicker Adam Vinatieri, now of course on the Indianapolis Colts, missing a total of six kicks so far on the year. 
thought he was going to retire after the last game is there's wow. another touchdown Red Hawks and just lowering his shoulder was Nate yeah. Aponte. Aponte, that was just a bull run. And here's a little, here's a little trivial, uh, believe it or not, but uh, the Colts kicker. Adam, Adam Vinatieri. Vinatieri's been on the Indianapolis Colts longer than he's been with the Patriots when he was with the Patriots. I just heard that little tidbit of information uh, yesterday morning on Sports Talk. It's kind of hard to believe that he's been with the Colts longer than he was with the Patriots. Yeah, but Gaskowski's been with the Patriots a significant amount of time now, too, because he, he took over right after um, Minitari, and um, it's a lot of years. And he's been pretty consistent. Yes. You know, um, he doesn't have the amount of clutch kicks that Vinatieri had over the years with the Patriots, but he's been um, pretty consistent. Good. Yeah. yeah. Nine seconds to go. Brockton will receive the ensuing kickoff, 21-13. Yeah, with nine seconds left, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Natick tried to squib kick. They don't want to give it to the dangerous receivers back there, kickoff returners. Good call, Miles. Yeah, they might squib it or something. And Brockton might try the good old lateral, hook and, lateral, lateral. Hook, hook and ladder? Yeah. But that's very dangerous, you know? I mean, you're, you're only down by um, eight points. How many times during this last Patriots game did we see the Dolphins version of that, the Miami Miracle? This one taken by a Johnny Horn who runs into trouble at the 38 yard line. One play on the clock, two seconds to be exact. Now, what would you do? Would you down it or would you throw it? I'd go to the air, try and get yeah, it to um, Isaiah Laguerre or, or Navon Reed. Navon Reed. <laughs> Looks like the boxers are going to try something. Especially, now look, look at the... Um, look at the far side, four wide to the far side. Isaiah Laguerre, the lone man to the near side. Yes, but they have the right defender out there. Bradley Down over the, the middle. middle. One-handed grab by wow. Trey Shula Hall. He's not gonna make it to the end zone, but he does pick up... Nice catch, you'll see 30 it here. yards. It was a nice catch. One-handed takes it and with And really, it wasn't hand. a bad call to go in the middle. Yep. But uh, Nate was playing their prevent defense. Yeah, and hope, you know, hoping that the um, the receivers would turn into uh, blockers, give them a crease. Well, we've hit halftime. It is 21 to 13. The Natick Red Hawks leading the Brockton Boxers. It was a good start for the Brockton Boxers after that first drive, guys. But then the Boxers' offense is kind of slowed up. Yeah, but I tell you, I'm the defense got to do something to check this. Uh, Explosive Natick offense, time-consuming, ball-killing Natick offense. They're going to have to figure out something in halftime and come back out with it to slow them down. Yeah, and three rushing touch, touchdowns by Natick, one by the uh, quarterback and two by um, Jalen Aponte. Well, the boxers have some adjustments to make at halftime, and we've got a halftime show to enjoy by the Brockton High School marching band, 21-13 to the score at halftime once again. The Natick Red Hawks leading the Brockton Boxers at the break. We're going to step aside, take a short break, and bring you second half action right after this.
the two for the new cheerleaders. And now coming on the field, led by Kevin Cardell, the Brockton High School award-winning band. Folks, the winning number of the 50-50 raffle graduate tickets is 412267. Last three numbers, two, six, seven. If you have the lucky winner, please come to the press box to redeem your prize. Four, one, two, two, six, seven.
Great job once again by our halftime dancers, our majorettes, our color guards, our band. As always, let's hear it from them. Sit tight, folks. We're back in three and a half minutes as we start the second half. Hello and welcome back into Rocky Marciano Stadium for second half action between the Natick Red Hawks and your Brockton Boxers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside Big Game Miles Jackson, B Matt, Brian Madden. The score 21 13. It is an eight point lead for the Natick Red Hawks, who have had a lot of success in their kicking game. As you, that is the second touchback of the game. The Boxers will start at the 25 yard line. The kicker is outstanding. Yeah, and the boxes, boxes offense really needs to do something here. Bring the ball up the field for a little bit. Keep it out of the hands of uh, Natick's def uh, offense. Well, I'm sure the coaching staff has, you know, talked about any adjustments they need to make. Um, playing smart, tightening up defensively a little bit, bit more. The offense is is there. You know, um, you know they they threatened a couple of times that they weren't able to. Um, you know, convert, but um, they're right there in it. They're right in, right in the game right now. So, long way to go. Got 24 minutes to go. Devontae Medley has had a pretty good game through the year. That's been helped by his big wideout, Navon Reed, who had that phenomenal big gain earlier on in the first quarter. Now it's Amik Watterson cutting in and out, getting to the 30, now to the 32 yard line. Again, another nice surgical type run for Watterson. Yeah, he's able to pick apart those, and find those creases, yeah. those holes, and, and just, you know, catapult through them for a big gains. Medley in the gun, Watterson to his right. Three receivers to the far side, now Watterson moves over to Medley's left quarterback keeper he picks up Watterson as the lead blocker but Medley's going to get run into he's got a gain of maybe one yeah, yeah defense was, was ready for that yeah there was a design play and and where there was no option they just saw the quarterback just running towards him and was able to you know close up that gap Medley back to pass thinking screen now over the middle almost intercepted he it was intended for Trey Shula Hall was who the play read that he was about five yards behind it. And, but he was open. That's just That just wasn't a good pass. Right He's there right there the open. Middle. And he just overthrew him. Well, you know what? That was his second read because his first read was, was, um, screen. was a screen to um, Isaiah Laguerre. And he saw the defender right there and went to his second read and just um, overthrew, you know, him. overthrew him. Four wideouts, trips to the near side. Watterson in the backfield. Low snap handled by Medley. He immediately cuts out and chucks it towards the near sideline for Navon Reed, but it was thrown out of play. Yeah, not a good pass. You, you got to give your receivers a chance to catch it, especially when you got big receivers. Well, let me tell you, I think he hesitated. If he would have just let it fly right away and didn't pause, I think he would have hit him in stride. So my eyes did not deceive me on the stat sheet from last week against Lynn Classical. Amik Watterson had two punts, and this one bobbled and in trouble. I think the boxers have it. It looked like the boxers got, got the ball. Number what? 34, Diamond no, Blakely, they're they're and they're calling it that Natick recovered it. Yeah, he did this a nice kid. job falling on the ball, number six. Aiden Holly, man. He's... he's got a horseshoe up his butt I mean because that's two um muffs muffs yeah that um it looked like the boxes were going to recover the um the ball the loose ball and he was able to get it I thought Diamond Blakely had that one he was under the Natick returner Natick's got another mismatch on the near side and 
the Red Hawks trying to take advantage of that with Nick Palmer. He's got a gain of about two and a half. And Sean O'Brien did a great job uh, just disrupting that play, making the uh, receiver go inside to where he had help. He was able to bring him down for just a short gain, two yards. Last week, Amik Watterson punted for four times for 126 yards, averaging 31 and a half yards. That bests the listed punter on the Brockton roster, Kevin McCarthy, by about 15 and a half yards. About 10 and a half yards, excuse me. Ponty went through there hard. You know, you heard that connection. Shoulder bad, shoulder bad to shoulder bad pad. And um, drove the defender back another yard and a half. Yeah, and that's going to start to wear down on the boxes um, with DePonte just barreling in there with his strength. Boxers need to do something to get this ball back. They don't want Natick on the field too long. That's just more wear and tear on your defense. Designed quarterback keeper for the Red Hawks. Lederman has a gain of about eight. And this temperature um, is not conducive with, uh, you know, football. It's, it's still probably about 75 degrees. So it's hot. What's, what's the call? Mad 76, dog? but the thing is the breeze has died. Yes. So. I was pretty accurate. I was just a point <laughs> off. Just a degree. <laughs> Here's a Ponte stacked up right at the first down marker. It yeah, it's like they're going to give it to him the way, the, the way they're going to mark that football. <laughs> the little Michael Jackson playing in the background. And who doesn't love Michael? The boxers' offense needs to listen to that song because be they got something. to be starting something, something. soon. <laughs> nice, nice play on words there, Maddie. Good job. I love it. I kind of want to just stop and listen because these are some good tunes. That's old school. By Steve Forts. Yes. That's old school. Gap Band. Mm hmm. Burn rubber on me. Pass complete to Odophile. Or Ophidile, excuse me. And those um, Brockton defense got to come up on those receivers that's just kind of standing over there in the flat between Palmer and now number two, Nickel O'Fadell. Too much space between the receiver and the defender. Trips to the far side, they give to Aponte who runs into his own line but gets across the first down marker. And Natick is just quietly moving downfield. And using you know, up the clock. Yeah, they're just, um, I mean, keep, keep not him. a whole lot of flash. Nope. Got Matty over here singing. Just straight ahead football, <laughs> power football right now for Natick. Stronger by Kanye West. That was like my freshman year is Ofadal gets taken down from behind by number 30. That is Markendi Souffrant. See that, that little, the receiver took one step back. And somehow the boxes need to adjust a little bit better. Well, I'll tell you, the nature, native, uh, native coaching staff is doing a great job mixing it up with running plays and pass plays probably about 50-50 right about now. And um, they're being very successful making these uh, completions. Lederman back to pass. What a grab. Untouched is number 33, Jake Dunlap. Yep. 
Dunlap just ran straight down, squared in towards the goal post, and he was open. The defensive back for Brockton could not keep up with him. You'll see it right here on the replay. And actually, there was nobody covering him. That was breakdown in coverage. There was only one defensive back back there with two receivers, so it really wasn't his fault. It was just a breakdown of defensive coverage. Yeah, Isaiah Jackson got over there, but a little bit too late. Yeah, he had two, two, Natick had two receivers out there and one def defensive back covering both of them. And that was, uh, you know, good heads up play by, um, you know, the quarterback, Will Liederman, to uh, find an open receiver. Yeah, Liederman's been, ever since uh, after that first couple of uh, series of um, offensive plays by Nadick, uh, Liederman's been very pinpoint on his passing yeah, for the been, most part. He's been very accurate, yes. So, and not to be lost in that play is Waltzman's extra point that cleared the uprights and made it all the way to the track way behind the end zone. Yeah, we, we're going to find a way to get the, um, the band to move back down to the other end of the field where they used to be. <laughs> well, they were, they were doing the annual uh, every game check-in of who's in what house at Brockton High. I understand. And, and the yellow house, because it's the greatest, took the title this week. But being uh, 20 feet in front of us, it's kind of very loud. At least the camera's upstairs this week. Yeah. Because game one, our camera was in front of the press box in that, mixed in with the Brockton High band. And that was a challenge. So, as we mentioned, next week, up at Everett High School on Saturday afternoon, 1 p.m. kickoff for that one. Let's try to pull some strings to get the old school DJ, Miles Jackson, to spin some tunes at the MGM, not, uh, what is it, win up there, the Encore Boston Harbor, the new casino. You got some contacts, some hookups? I could try to pull some strings. Pull some strings. Get a little after party going. A little old school after party. Twenty-eight to thirteen. After the booming extra point for Sam Waltzman. Yeah, and speaking of old school DJ, I'll be spinning the hits for the. 45th class reunion of 1974 um, at Thorny Lee, October the 12th, and um, everybody's invited that was uh, graduated in the 70s. You're welcome yeah, to come on out. I just missed my um, class of 79 reunion. I didn't hear about it until after the fact. Actually, um, Peter's dad, Peter, told me about it. I was like, oh, I missed that one. Well, well, come on out to class of 74. We'll be, I'll be throwing the hits from the 70s and 80s. Amik Watterson bouncing off hits left and right. And the momentum, depending on the spot, is going to get the yeah. boxers a first down. What a second, third, and wow. fourth effort by Amik Watterson. Yes, but I, I think the, the uh, referees took a little too much time to blow the whistle. Yeah. You know, there was a stop and, and play, and you're going to see right here. All right. That's they could blow the whistle they right there. The they ball. still didn't blow the whistle. Right. The still didn't blow the whistle. Standing right and now there. now they just blew the whistle. That's too much time. Yeah, chance, always chance of somebody getting hurt. Yeah, for someone to get hurt or for there to be a turnover. Speaking of getting hurt and the potential for that, Devontae Medley just got and leveled from behind. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Medley takes the sack for a loss of one, but there were three Red Hawks defensive linemen that just fell on him. He had his back spun to the field. And this is a very important drive for the boxes 
with four minutes remaining in the um, third quarter, they need to um, cut into this lead. Trips to the far side, Medley in the gun. The end around give to Amik Watterson. Now jumping back, cutting to the outside. Amik Watterson has a first down and more across the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, 15, 10, him. 5. End zone, a long touchdown for Amik Watterson, but a flag down way back at the, at the 34 yard line. Yeah, they're gonna bring that one back. And what's the call? It's in the backfield too, so it's more than likely gonna come back. As holding it is. against holding. the boxers. So instead of a 69 yard touchdown run for Big Waterson, it's going to come see if we can all find the way it. back. Number 13, Number Trey 13. Shula Hall, right there. Oh, that, that's, that's a judgment yeah, call. They could have yeah, let that go. Yeah. The play was already passed. Come on. That's devastating. Yes, that is. That, that can take the air, the wind out of the uh, sail there. And, and you know, Watterson's got to be tired, you know, after that run. So they're not going to go to him right away. They'll go to the air to Navon, Navon Reed. It'll be second. Yeah, excuse me. Good. It'll be second and 17. From the boxers 24 yard line. And this is another weird one, Brian, as we saw last week, the penalty for offensive holding isn't defined as 10 yards. It's 10 yards from the spot of the foul. And that's gotta be one of those new rules. It's yes. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So instead of second and 20, it's second and 17. But now, that was a, a, a great call right there to Navon Reed. And he was able to cut half of that Cut into um, third down to six. So, took 12 yards off of that. Six yards is obtainable. Big third down for the offense. But Amik Watterson is not on the field. Medley drops back to pass. He's got his man on the far side. Clutch catch, clutch catch. Yeah, sorry. And throw. Josiah. And I'll tell you, Steve Force, he's yes. got nice. We got a play. Pass complete to Navon Reed. Flag <laughs> back down at the line of scrimmage. DJ Force is having as much and fun as the kids. <laughs> down Illegal receiver downfield for the boxers. Let's, Let's see, see if we here. Can see it. See it. Number oh, 77. Number yeah. He's pushing his man forward. It's going to be called on Nazia Armour. See, the, the line's got to remember if it's, if it's a pass play call, just hold him right there. You know, keep him right there. Don't push him forward like a running play. And that's what happened. Yeah, because he was he was just being offensive lineman, just pushing, just yeah. protecting his quarterback. My quarterback. It's my quarterback. Four wide for the boxers. And it is number 26 in the backfield. This pass complete to Mick Watterson. 2.06 to go in a quick moving third quarter, 28 to 13. Brockton chasing 15. Medley gonna keep it himself, trying to find a hole he gets to the 41 yard line. It'll be enough for a boxer first down. And here's the replay. You see, decides to keep it, has no open receivers, turns it upfield and uh, gets the first down. But I will say this, there's a player down on the field, but um, yeah, Brockton is seven. playing with a sense of emergency, you know, urgency. And um, 
it's evident in the play calling and the way they're moving the ball. They need to keep that up. Even if they don't score in a minute and 59 seconds remaining, they need to score on this drive. Yeah, that's number seven, Terrence Cherry. But Natick, it's like possibly a cramp. Oh, it's a cramp. Yeah, when you see a, see the leg being stretched out like that, we've all had those Charlie horses and cramps. and Especially with the unexpected heat today. The heat, and if you're not hydrating, you know. The lactic acid in, your, in your, your muscles just tense up, stiffen up. And you can see he's running off the field unassisted, so he'll be fine. He'll be back out there in a couple of plays. We just watch the marching band <laughs> just tearing it up on the dance floor. <laughs> I'll tell you, Ford's got these kids jumping and pumping. We, it we, is first and ten. Give to Watterson, who picks up another couple after contact. It's only a gain of two. Yeah, that could very easily have been a loss of yardage. Yeah. And um, Watterson just kept on moving his legs, kept moving, and was able to pick up a couple of yards. Clock is still running. Just over a minute and 30 seconds remaining in the um, third quarter. But I'll tell you, we need to have a stand camera. Camera for the stands. Watch the Brockton High uh, students just having a good time out here, supporting their team. Medley back to pass, looking long for Navon Reed. Right through his hands, he was contacted on the near sideline, but not enough to warrant a flag. Yeah, good Nick Palmer yeah, did an outstanding yeah, he did a good job defending, defending that. You'll see it here. Medley drops back and throws the ball perfectly. And Navon Reed is, is going up to get it he just at the last second. Palmer Nick Palmer reaches in, in there with yeah. his left hand and knocks the ball away. Good play. Yo, this used to be one of my favorites. <laughs> That's when Rap was in his infancy. What a catch on the far sideline. I believe that was Adam Ola Filet. And what we've seen so far tonight is Devontae Medley consistently overthrowing his receivers who have to really jump up and extend their bodies to grab his passes. He looks long and rainbow pass for Trey Shula Hall is overthrown. But I'll tell you, um, he's been, I know he's overthrown a couple of receivers. Here you see on the replay, the ball is overthrown here. It was a good throw, good, good play. He threw it right to the pylon, and the receiver wasn't able to get there. If he could have got that pass to the receiver inside, the receiver had the defensive back behind him, he could have shielded with his body and caught that football if it was a little bit better pass. <laughs> this one incomplete intended for Navon Reed. So we just heard the little Einstein's theme song. What's next, Rugrats? The crowd might lose it. And didn't look like Navon was really ready for that. This is an important play right here, third and 10. Yeah, very important play for the boxer offense. If they don't get the first down, they need to get at least close, fourth and in, um, inches or fourth and in a few yards at that. But right now it's third and long, third and 10. Trips to the far side, the man in motion is Isaiah Laguerre. It's a quarterback keeper for Medley, who is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Nice job. Go for it. Yeah, nice job by Nadek to go for defense. It. I mean, they're, they're deep in their own end zone, yeah. in, um, into the field. And they need a first down. Yeah, defense did a nice job flushing that 
that play out. Medley back to pass. He sacked. It'll be a turnover on downs. Back at the 31 yard line is where the Red Hawks will start. Yeah, you can see the pocket you, collapse. You see here, look at all the receivers in the middle of the field. One, two, three, four. Within five yards of each other. Yeah, the problem, one problem was the pocket collapsed too quickly. The oh, offensive line. I'm sorry. The uh, offensive I'm, line got to give them a little bit long. more time. You got to get rid of it. You got to get, rid of, get it. rid of it. Yeah. Even if you throw an interception, you got to get rid of it. You got to get rid of it. Give your receivers a chance to catch it. Because he had four receivers in the middle of the field. If he threw it there, the likelihood of one of them catching the ball is high. And there was only three defenders back there for yes. the Red Hawks. Four wide for the Natick Red Hawks on this first and ten. And one. It's a gain of two for Jalen Aponte. And we have hit the end of the third quarter. It is 28-13. I think the play that has defined this game so far that would have been a real turning point is that really long 60, what would have been a 69 yard touchdown run for Amig Watterson that was called back for a holding penalty against the boxers. Yeah, and, and, and that, that was a momentum breaker. Yeah. Because the boxers were moving the ball very easily as they were in his last drive. And you know what would start it here was also another call, questionable call in the, in the backfield. So Brockton now has 12 minutes to try to avoid back-to-back -back losses for the first time this season. Yes, and with the new format, you know, um, to make it to the playoffs, it's based on your ranking statewide. And you have to be in the, in the top, what, 20? To make it into the, to the playoffs. And they have a very formidable opponent next week in Everett. And then they've got back-to-back -back road games. They got Everett, and then they're at Severian, which is another tough matchup. Ooh. So, I'll tell you what, there's still plenty of time. There's you know, 11 minutes, 50 seconds, but they need, they need um, Natick to go three and out. They need them to stop them on his first drive. It's third and three. They need to stop them and have them kick the ball, get the ball back, and then they have a chance. And uh, they're calling that pass incomplete. Actually, third down and seven. You need to stop. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Brockton needs the defensive stop here on third and seven. Yes, they do. Stacking the tackle Looks box. Looks like they're gonna blitz. Lederman back to pass. Long over the middle. Off the fingertips of number 33, Jake Dunlap. Dunlap was open, had a step on the uh, defender. And he made a nice cut on the inside post pattern. And one more step. And um, oh, here we go. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. What y'all know about this kid's story? All about how my life got flipped, turned upside, upside down. down. Six minutes, just sit right, right there. Tell you how he became Prince of a town called Bel Air. Can't wait for my phone to blow up from people saying the little five six white boy kid rap Will Smith. This one touchdown at the 25 yard line. Playgrounds where I spend most of my days. Not maxing, relaxing, all cool, and all shooting some b-ball outside school. Macho band said, hey, we need some time too. <laughs> 11.32 to go in the fourth quarter. Brockton chasing 15, 28 to 13 the score. 
This has been a fun one. The atmosphere here at Marciano has been special tonight. Yes. Led by the efforts of DJ Steve Forts. Four wide, Isaiah Laguerre, the man in motion. Medley looking for Adam Olafale, who has to spin. He grabs it down to the 39 yard line. What a catch by Adam Olafale. Yeah, that was a great timing play. And there you see the replay. Turns around, catches the ball, tries to break the tackle. I'm glad he caught it, but if he could have led him a little bit further, he was gone. He had to turn around and wait for the ball. Medley pitches to Watterson, who tries to split the defense and does. And what could have been a no-gain yard uh, run turns into a nine-yard gain for and the you're gonna see it. Looks like he's going to be a fleet fickle. Looks like he's going to throw it. And then he turns I thought it, they had him right field. there at the line of scrimmage. His ability to break tackles and get yards after contact is unmatched. Why? They, now for Filet. with the flag. It's coming. It's, yeah, he's, he's trying to get <laughs> Two of them in. Wait, what? Well, and unfortunately, Adam, he hurt Adam himself. Filet is injured on that contact, and the flags oh, no. came in. The All right, let's see stops. what happens here. The ball's all right kinds of contact. There, he landed. He got oh, his he legs twisted on, up. Yeah, he hurt his knee. But... I, I, I didn't get it out in time, but the um, the back judge you that guys, was in the end zone, he's trying to get his flag out. He's pulling. You guys were to... yelling for a flag before Adam Olafale hit the ground. <laughs> but but the referee could not get the flag out of his pocket. And then when he finally got out, he threw it straight into the ground. It was hilarious. Show that replay one more time. If you can. I'd like to see. Oh, here we go. Now watch, watch the referee in the so back. So here's the where the judge. penalty is called. You now watch, see watch the referee in a, in a oh. trying to get the flag out. Yeah, he twisted his knee. One. He's reaching for the flag there. He's reaching for the flag. They both are, the one on the sideline and on the end line. No, the, but he couldn't get now it Now he's reaching for he's it there on, it out. on the uh, sideline. Why do you keep backing it up? Let it play. <laughs> Just let it play. That did not look good for the receiver. As you can see, he twisted his knee pretty bad, and he's in pain on the sideline. See him trying to fight to yeah. get it out? Oh, you guys are killing me. And the, <laughs> and the other official, he got his up, he, but he bombed his, like, 20 yards. Because he expected the back judge to, to um, throw the flag, throw the but flag. he couldn't get out of his pocket. All right. So the injured boxer is Adam Olafale. And he's made some um, key catches here in this. Uh, yeah, he's had a great game. Yeah, third and game. fourth quarter. That should be a first and goal for the boxers on the one yard line. Yes, it should be because it was right there in the end zone. So he gets up with the help of trainer Jerry Connor. Well, he towers over Jerry. Yeah, 6'6". Six, six. Oh, he's 6'6". Six, six. a big target. 215 pounds. Let's give him some Brock to love. It is a left leg injury for Adam Olafale. <laughs> Tough kid. Tough kid. As an appearance foul will give the boxers first down at the... Why at the 16? Why oh, is it not at the two yard line? Penalty. Because on, in high school, they don't put it where the um, foul occurred. They walk off 10, 10 yards. Screen pass to Watterson. He's to the 10. The five trying to cut back inside. He's pushed out of play by Nick Palmer. Yeah, they don't put it at the spot or the foul. Well, that makes it first and goal at the five. And let me tell you, this has been an outstanding drive by the Brockton Boxers. Um, helped by that um, pass interference call. But they were they were driving anyway. Give to Watterson, bobbing and weaving, trying Touchdown. to get to the end zone. He's going to be stopped just shy. Just shy, yep. Watterson stopped short on the run yard line. Second down and goal. Yeah, here you see it right here. Nice blocking. He powers through. It's down at the one yard line. Yeah, he I picked think the they're going to give it right. to Watterson again. Yeah. There's the give. And he's stopped a yard shy once again. 
Yeah, last week, Watson had 221 yards on 16 carries, averaging 13.8 yards on a carry. It's quite an average. Yes, longest was 64. A 64-yard run will help your average go up. The jumbo set for the boxers, Medley, and a false start against Tamik Watterson. Yeah, he can't believe it. Now it's going to be five yards back. So instead of uh, third down and one, it's going to be third down and six. Markendi Sue front joining Tamik Watterson in the backfield. That's yeah, tough break there for the boxers. And now yeah. you can see they're exchanging running backs for wide receivers. On what will be is not their friend right the now. Six. No, it's not. Nine, ten to go for the boxers to try to mount the comeback. Navon Reed in a mismatch in coverage on the far side, looking for him in oh, caught by Navon nice. Reed. What a throw by Devontae Medley, getting it through double coverage to Navon Reed. Who yeah, he, he really threaded the needle on that, as you'll see in the replay. Excellent pass right there, threaded the needle. And only where Navon Reed could get it. That's right, that's right, because it was just out of the reach of Aiden Hawley, who um, just could not get up there and get a finger on the ball. Well, quarterback had to throw a little mustard on there to, to thread the needle in. And that's exactly what he did before the defender could get his hands on it. 28-19 the score now. Brockton is going to line up to go for two points. It's a big two-point conversion because they're down by nine points. Medley in the gun trips to the near side. Back to pass. Screen pass to Watterson, who is going to be wrapped up well short of the goal line. Yeah, that play did not develop well at all for the boxers, and that was a big stop by Natick's defense. Yeah, it's still. So they, it's still a um, two possession. Um, two possessions. Yeah, two possession um, lead by the uh, Natick. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't like the call. I don't like the screen pass in that situation. If you're going to throw it, throw it to the end zone and, and give your receivers a chance to um, look. He's, he's at the 10-yard line, and then he's going to try and fight through all these defenders to get a, um, two points. Bad call. Bad play call on that one. Now it will be Amik Watterson to kick off for the Brockton Boxers. Now the Boxers' defense is going to have to make something happen. They need a turnover. They don't need um, Natick to march down the field and take a lot of the time off on his clock. They need to do something big. The return by Ophidal. Bringing it back to just about the 40 yard line. 8.50 to go. Brockton, as you guys mentioned, has to come up with a defensive stop here. They need a turnover. They need more yeah. than defensive stuff. It is now a two possession game. Yeah, they need um they need a turnover. We're just under nine minutes for me. At worst, mm -hmm. um three and out, but they it'd be nice to get a turnover here. Lederman but, in the gun, he hands off to Jalen Aponte. He busts up ahead for a gain of four. Breaking news, because when news breaks, BCA Sports breaks it. Much as we did the Patriots releasing Antonio Brown early in the first quarter. 
the game against Durfee High School here at Marciano Stadium on Friday, October 18th has been rescheduled to Saturday, October 19th with a kickoff of 2 p.m. So, the BCA Sports crew will rally on a Saturday to bring you another edition of Boxer Football. Yes, we will. Now, Steve Ford's playing Zombie Nation, of course, the goal song of the Boston Bruins. And a big 15-yard penalty. And that's a tough break for the boxers there. I didn't see the uh, referee make the call as far as what the infraction was, but it's gonna hurt the boxers because now it's first down. And I'll tell you, we're gonna get nothing but... Um, to give to a Ponte, he is brought down after a nice gain and enough for a first down. Yeah, he's a bruising back. You'll see it right here. The defensive backs had to come up and make the play, and that hurts. It was Isaiah Laguerre making the stop for the boxers. Yeah, we're gonna get a, a large dose of Aponte right now yeah. because they're gonna just keep it on the ground, sprinkle in a couple pass plays in there, and um, you know to give Aponte a blow. Yeah, you only got seven breath. minutes and 30 seconds left on this clock. Lederman pitches to Aponte, trying to get to the outside. He does, and he's got a gain of about six. Now that play right there, I like that play on that two-point conversion. Brockton should have pitched it out to Aponte. Excuse me, pitched it out to uh, Watterson. No, it was Down Aponte. here when, when they was. That's what they did. Did they pitch it out to him? Yeah, they pitched well, it that, out to that, him. That play just didn't. No, they pitched it out to him. The play didn't work well and didn't um, and, formulate um, well. They, there was, so they pitched it out to him at the 10-yard line, so then he had to try to make up 10 yards. Yeah. They should have threw it in the end zone and, and let your tall receivers come down with it. Lederman gives off to number 26, Nizaya Montes, his first oh, carry of the game. The leading rusher of the Red Hawks last week. And I'll tell you, um, Aponte, Aponte is Natick's new starting running back. It's nice to see the young kids appreciate the generation that had good music. Bad snap and Lederman's in trouble. He's going to get wrapped up way back at the 41 yard line. That, that, was, a, that was a big play right there. That was a bad snap and plus the quarterback wasn't quite, quite ready but it wasn't a good snap. That brings up a fourth. And a hundred. Yeah, fourth and they got to get to the, the <laughs> eastern border for the first down. <laughs> Yeah, they need to get to um, Bridgewater. Yeah, fourth and 25 officially. That took them out of uh, field goal range. As we maybe, before. maybe, because their kicker's got quite the length. Well, he's punting anyway. He's punting, he's punting. Be interested to see if Natick takes a delay of game. Just to give them a little bit more room, but a sideline warning against the boxers that players crowding the line. And Amik Watterson's gonna change out for a Johnny Horn for the return. Also back is Sean O'Brien. The snap, a high spiraling kick. It's not gonna go as far as Natick wants. And they're just gonna let it bounce to the 23 yard line. 4.54 to go in the fourth quarter. 28-19, Brockton needs to score quick and then get the ball back. Hey, what, what was the term we used last week? 
It's not impossible, but highly unlikely? Yes. And I, I called it as they weren't going to be able to do it. You said, so there's a chance. And they almost did it. So. We're being told by our director, Mike the Postman Simmons, that this game indeed is not over yet. No, it's not over yet. But we need a quick score. Yeah. Within his 54 seconds. Medley gonna keep it himself, trying to find a hole in the middle. He's got a first down for the boxers up to the 35 yard line. And the boxers with a hurry up offense. Devontae Medley, 17 carries coming into this game on the air, 104 yards. Now he's going to pass originally intended for Isaiah Laguerre. Yeah, they had two defensive backs back covering uh, Olawahu. 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 Four thirty-one to go in the fourth quarter. Devontae Medley rolling out to the near side and overthrowing his man again. It was Trey Shula Hall. Now you got to make that catch. It hit him in his hands. You got to make that catch. I don't but care it hit him in his hands, completely outstretched. He wasn't that outstretched. His hands were above his head. Yes, but he's got to make that catch. I think it's the other way around on that. I think Medley's going to make that throw. Yeah, and, and it's tough when but, he's but, running but, to but his but left. Taking into consideration, he was rolling out. To his he left. He was on the move, being chased by defenders, and he threw it to the receiver, and it hit him in his hands. You got to make that catch. Now, I could see if it was behind him. I could see if it was too low. It was up. All you could do up on the sideline. Up, yeah, by the sidelines. Yeah, it's got to make that catch. I stand by my convictions. Medley to pass. Rolling out, stops and pops to the middle of the field. And wide of his man, Isaiah Laguerre. And here you see Laguerre goes inside and just sits down. Wide open. Wide open. And he couldn't get it to him. And he threw it too far to, to his the left. right. Yeah, to the yeah, to his right. He's got to get that in there. Do or die, fourth and ten for the boxers. With 419 on the clock. Fourth and ten. For Devontae Medley in the boxers, trips to the near side to meet Watterson in the backfield. Medley to pass, he heaves it up, and it's intercepted. There was no boxer remotely close to that. Medley got decked after he released that ball. Wow, and that they, should have been a pass. I yeah, mean, that absolutely the, should have been a rough in the passer, the passer. Call. Yeah. He came in with his head a little bit and was aiming up high. And he threw Medley back about five yards. Yeah. And Medley gave up a lot. A lot of weight. Let's Let's see it again. Watching replay. the right side of your screen, Devontae and Medley, the quarterback. De defender. See, that helmet's he up him, there. And he flies about two yards. And the helmet was up there by his face mask. The defensive um, def defender's helmet. And now we know why that pass was intercepted, because Medley decided to get rid of it before he was hit by a freight train. But no, not only that, but where he threw it, there was no receiver in that area. Yeah. I think it was a, a, a miscommunication on the play because the receivers were on the inside, he threw it to the outside. 4.10 to go. And the first of, I'm sure, many, car many carries to Jalen Aponte down to the 30. Let's take Another look at that run. You can see Naponte must have over 100 yards today. Oh, yeah. Nice spin move. <laughs> 
three and a half to go and counting. Lederman in the gun. They give to Terrence Cherry. He spins off the initial hit. And he's got a first down for the Red Hawks down to the 21 yard line. Yeah, Cherry and Aponte have been one two punch this whole football game. And I'll tell you, this is a, a tough loss for the boxers. It is. Um, it was a toss up in the first half. They were down by eight. And then um, the wheels fell off. Yeah, that, that touchdown that was called back, that was that was a, that took some of the wind out of their sail. It was a momentum breaker. Yeah. Yeah, because had that touchdown counted, Good. yeah. It'd be a whole different ball game. Well, they could have they could have continued to play with urgency, but also, you know, only had to make up eight points or seven points, not make up 11 or 12. The tubers are doing something on the sideline. There's four tubers and they're just, they're going for a ride. A spin cycle. What's that? I can't hear a thing. <laughs> every tuba in the Brockton High Marching Band just went for a spin cycle on the Harry C. Allen track. Oh, okay, very good. That's what brought the crowd alive for that short moment. Of course, the Harry C. Allen track surrounding Armand Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. So we have a timeout called by Brockton with 2.28 to go. Take this timeout to thank the cast and crew for bringing you the sights and sounds from Rocky Marciano Stadium, a very warm Rocky Marciano Stadium. It was 85 degrees at kickoff. At the helm, our director, Mike the Postman Simmons with yet another delivery to the viewers of Brockton. Instant replay, graphics, audio extraordinaire, the Greek freak, Phil Philippides, as Lederman gets tossed out at the five. I believe we've got Oh, Mike, Mike the Postman Simmons is on replay. And the Greek freak, Phil, Phil Philippides is on graphics. Well, who does that mean is directing? Huh? Well, Mike the Postman Simmons is at the helm. Yes. On camera, we have Isaac DeRosa. J.D. Winters was also helping out on graphics. And a touchdown for the Red Hawks. Touchdown. Terrence Cherry hobbling yeah, you again. you see the replay? Yeah. Well, when he jumped, he came down and kind of, oh, and one of the rocking players kind of fell on his ankle a little bit. And he's down in the end zone. Jalen Aponte on the touchdown for the Red Hawks. We've got Isaac Doros on camera, and of course, up in the Peter Farley press box. Female Brian Rad Madden, Big Game Miles Jackson, and myself, the Mad Dog Matt Nelson. And I'm sure Coach Benedict is very concerned about his one of his star running backs, Aponte. The boxers have a lot of work to do going into Everett High School next week. Again, a Saturday kickoff, 1 p.m. up at Everett High School. BCA Sports will be there. And I'll tell you, um, it's very important that Brockton comes away with at least one victory out of these two games, of the next two games, Everett or Zavarian. Yeah. Um, they need both. But if they can't have but those both, are two of the toughest teams in I the know, state, they and they're both one. on the road. They need, yeah, they need at least one. They're gonna steal one, you yeah. know, steal one at home, at home court because then the the um, well, you know, Durfee and New Bedford 
that's not going to do anything for them in the power rankings exactly. because those are pushover teams. Exactly. This is true. The win-loss record doesn't matter. That's why Brockton was so high in the state rankings after that week one win against Duxbury because Duxbury is always a tough team. Yes. The extra point is up and good. Almost going to the flagpole by the fence. Sam Waltzman, quite the leg. Remember, folks, our next home game has been moved to Saturday, October 19th against Derby. So instead of a Friday night game, it is a Saturday the boxers. game at 2 o'clock aren't back here at Marciano Stadium for the next month. Their next matchup is October 19th. Exactly one month from yesterday is the next Boxers home game. Well, it looks like boxers take this one on the chin. It's a tough, tough Natick team comes in here and defeats the boxers. Meek Watterson on the return. Goes up the middle. He stopped at the 37 yard line. Tough loss, yeah. you know. But I'll tell you, um, even though the native coach, head coach, said that the first two teams that they faced were um, weaker teams, um, they, were, they were a very formidable opponent today against, um, you know, noteworthy Brockton. Like yeah, this girl. will definitely bring uh, Natick's power rankings up a little bit. I mean, three decisive wins in their first three games of the season, and one of them happens to be the Brockton Boxers. Medley back to pass. And again, throwing behind his receiver. It was intended for number 26, Noah Olawu. I don't know what it, what it is with Medley tonight. His passes have been inaccurate for the most part. Yeah, he, that one touchdown pass was a nice touchdown pass. Threaded the needle, but yeah, overall, his passing rating this evening has, hasn't been up to par. And, and give uh, Natick's defensive line credit. They put a lot of pressure on him. Medley gets crushed out of bounds. Back at the line of scrimmage. The original line of scrimmage, so it'll be third and 10. Yeah, Medley needs to get this football down the field. Nothing short, but he needs to. And it's going to be a handoff. Meek Watterson bouncing off a tackle, trying to cut back inside. He gets to the 44. And Watterson's had a you know fantastic running game today. Yeah. He's put up a lot of yards, too. He's got to be over 100 yards, or at least close to it. Medley in trouble once again across the 50 to the 48 of Natick. The third and three. Medley back to pass. He's going to get hit, spin off the sack, get rid of it. Wow. He's going to have a gain of two. That's a generous spot, a gain of two. That'll be 
A timeout Brockton with 56 seconds to go. It'll be third and one. A long one, actually about a yard and a half to go. So Brian, if you're the boxers, what are you working on in practice this week going into Everett High School next week? I would work on passing accuracy and um, defense. Definitely need to work on, on you know, showing up that defense. Uh, as far as pass plays, I'd also look and see what, what Everett's strengths are. If their strengths are passing, then I'd work on the defensive backs and, and the linebackers, and also, um, um, you know, try and get some some um, some uh, some consistency. Sorry. Yes, some I was going to say, Miles, that there. that is going to be the word yeah. of the season for the boxers. Is Medley is just going sorry, to I, chuck it? I lost it. my attention. I was looking at the play. <laughs> Complete to Isaiah Laguerre for a boxer first down. But the first game, phenomenal defense for the Brockton Boxers. The offense took a very long time to start start up. Last week at Lynn Classical, a lot of offense, not a lot of defense. The Boxers have to find somewhere in the middle yes. and stick with it and be consistent. Trips to the far side for Devontae Medley, who's in the gun. Splitting out to the far side and into double coverage. That was caught. It'll be second and two. That was Isaiah Laguerre with a nice grab. I'll tell you, when Medley's on, he's on. You know? Five wide trips to the near side for Devontae Medley. Who lofts one up looking for Navon Reed. It's going to nice. fall incomplete. Navon should have held on to that. From here, let's see on the replay. It's like you should have held on to that. Okay, good defensive play. Yeah, yep. de yeah, yeah. Good, defense. good defense. Even if he didn't hit the ball, he disrupted him and hit his arms. Yeah. Made him drop it. Medley, quick pass for Chase Shula Hall. He gets into the end zone for a touchdown, Boxers. What a nice grab by Trey Shula Hall on the near sideline. Backs into the end zone. And I'll tell you, even though they're not gonna win the game, that those points are huge, you know, because uh, you don't wanna have a 20 some odd point uh, deficit. Right now it's 10 points and they can get it under double digits with um, an extra point. But now you're, you're just conversion. playing for the rankings. You're just, yeah. Which are, it's all important. Going for two points of the Brockton Boxers, Devontae Medley. End around give to Isaiah Laguerre, trying to turn the corner on the outside. He's Whoa. going to get wow. levels. And that was a long way to run. Notice the boxers don't have the um, the boxer logo on the side of their helmets this year. They've got clean maroon helmets. No boxer logo. Right. Are the helmets on their helmets? Amik Watterson to kick off. 12 seconds to go. Spiral and declaring himself down at the 24 yard line. 
Just make the and call. That was, a, that was a wise play. Just grab the ball and kneel down. Yeah. You know, why, why risk anything? Why, why risk a fumble? Why risk a fumble? Why risk any injuries? Yeah. Just go ahead and kneel and walk away with a win. Once again, great job by Ben. I'm sure Will Lederman, who has had a phenomenal night, a quarterback for the Natick Red Hawks, is just going to take one single knee here to end the game. And DJ Bortz. Victory formation for the Red Hawks, and that will end it. The final score is going to be 35 to 25. The Red Hawks have ending their last second loss last year here at Marciano Stadium tonight. A 10 point win. Miles will start with you. The boxers have a lot of work to do and they don't have a lot of time to do it. They're at Everett and then at Severian. Exactly. They don't have a lot of time to do it. Defense, as far as defense go, they need to work on their running game and, and their coverage on the passing game. There was some um, some miscues on their passing game, and they just came up against a couple of tough running backs. Fanatic, as far as the offensive goes, they just need to execute a little bit better on offense, and um, hopefully they can get it together this week. Brian, a, a potent passing attack for Will Lederman and the Natick Red Hawks. Brockton couldn't really catch up to them at any point, and it was a very balanced attack for the Red Hawks, but behind Jalen Aponte. Yes, yes. Uh, the running was, was awesome and, and their passing was, was very good as well. Um, and the boxes kind of matched early in the game, but then as the game went on, and then they had some, some calls that went, went against them, which really hurt, especially when they started having momentum going, especially that 69 um, touchdown that was called back. Well, the penalties did kill the Brockton boxers tonight, especially that holding call that wiped out Amik Watterson's what would have been a 65-yard touchdown. 35 to 25 is the final score for a Marciano Stadium tonight. The Brockton Boxers falling to one and two on the year. They've got two very tough matchups on the road at Everett High School and then at Severian. They're back here in about a month against Durfee and then they're at New Bedford to round out the regular season. It all comes down to the power rankings. Where will the boxers fall at the end of the regular season? 35 to 25, once again, the final score. Natick getting the victory against the Brockton boxers here at Marciano Stadium tonight. I want to thank you for watching, and on behalf of my broadcast partners, Be Mad Brian Madden, Big Game Miles Jackson, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.